Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at Glasgow. Now the theme of this game is to build up the city of Glasgow in Scotland. You are merchants travelling around the city, collecting resources and erecting buildings. And the game ends when a 20th building has been built. Now this is a 2 player only game as you can see across the bottom of the box and it uses a mechanism which I love. On your turn, you can move as far as you want to reach one of the resources or building sites. But the player who is furthest back will be the person who gets to go next. That means you can choose to advance to exa get exactly what you want, but your opponent may be able to take several turns in a row before you can move again. This game also uses a city building tile placement mechanism that we've seen in other games. You know, if this tile is placed next to this tile, it's worth extra points, or if you have a certain set of buildings, this tile will score a bonus. But that is combined with factories, which can generate your resources every time either player builds on the same row or column. Great for getting resources during the game, but doesn't score you very many points at the end. So, there are a lot of things I like in this game. So will it turn out to be a great game like the city that it's named after? Or will this one be better left in the back alley somewhere and forgotten about? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back to my final thoughts on Glasgow. This is Glasgow setup. Make a circle of four architects and random 12 contract tiles as shown here. You'll have two contract tiles remaining, which are placed back in the box. Above each architect, you'll place two random building tiles face up. Place all the resource tiles off to one side, along with the remaining building tiles. Each player gets a player board and one stone and one steel. Each player can only ever have a maximum of five stone, four steel, three coins, and one whiskey barrel. Each player will place their merchant meeple on the starting architect, and all architects have two spaces on them for the meeples. Whoever is first will place their meeple further back. In this game, the player who goes next is always the player whose meeple is further back. When it is your turn, you're going to move your meeple as far forward clockwise as you want and take the action of the tile you land on. Many of the contract tiles will gain your resources as depicted on the tile, and these tiles can only hold one player's meeple. There are special contract tiles, like doing conversions, or the tile itself does nothing for you currently, but the next time you move, you'll perform the tile you land on twice, etc. All these special tiles are outlined in the rulebook. If you land on an architect, and both meeples can be on the same architect at the same time, you can build one or more of the buildings above the architect. The cost of the building is shown in the top left of the building tile. Pay for the tile by returning the appropriate resources from your player board. The building tile will also show you what type of building it is, how it scores or what its action is when triggered, and a small arrow. Whenever you place a building, you'll always make sure that the small arrow is pointing towards you. This way, when doing points at the end of the game, you know which buildings you own. After placing the tile, and I'll talk a bit more about placement in a bit, you will refill the architect's buildings. You can now build another tile. It will cost you one additional coin, plus the resources shown in the building tile. And if you want to build a third, it's going to cost you two additional coins, plus the resources on the tile, etc. Now a few notes about placement. The city will be built up in the middle of the circle. The maximum size it will ever be is 5 by 4, that is 20 tiles. As soon as one direction, either the length or the width, reaches 5 tiles, then the other direction is limited to 4 tiles, and the first tile placed does not have to be the center of the new city. Now most tiles will score at the end of the game. But the factory tiles are special in that when another building is built in its same row or column irrespective of who built it, it will produce the good or allow an action to be taken by the owner of that factory. A factory can never trigger itself, but any other factory, along with any other tile, when placed, will trigger all the factories in the newly placed row or column. If you do not have room for any of the resources generated, they are going to be lost. When you finish taking your turn, then the player who is furthest behind will then take their turn. It is possible for one player to take multiple turns in a row as long as they are the furthest maple back. The game is over when there are 20 building tiles built. Players will then add up their points. You will get points printed in the top right corner on all your buildings. You'll also receive any bonus points from tiles as long as they meet the requirements. Some of these requirements could be where the tile is placed, like the shop. You'll get an additional 5 points if it ends up in the corner of the city. Or the train station which will be worth an additional 10 points if you also own a landmark, factory, park, and tenement, etc. The player with the most points is the winner. In the case of a tie, the player who placed the final building to end the game is actually the loser. Now, let's get back to see what I thought about Glasgow. 
theme and components. The theme of this one is fairly abstract. You're really just kind of collecting resources to get something else. It could have been about anything really. So the theme itself is rather abstract. The components though I liked. I liked the nice little colorful player boards and I liked that the wooden pieces actually looked like what they were and weren't just wooden cubes. So components get a well done. On to the gameplay. This game actually turned out to be exactly what I'd hoped for for a lighter, lighter Euro two player game. It has two mechanisms that I really enjoy and implemented them extremely well. The move as far as you want always gives you decisions to be made and it works extremely well with the building of the buildings. You know, do you move ahead to get that building knowing that you're giving up resources or even other actions for your opponents to take? That for me is the most entertaining piece of this game. The tile placement piece kind of took second fiddle to that. Now, the tile placement is fairly enjoyable, but it's straightforward. But I think one of the best things for the tile placement is actually the factory. Now, many of those tiles score you points at the end of the game, but the factories generate your resources during the game. Again, you've got decisions to be made. Resources now or points later on in the game. Again, great kind of meaningful decisions that you need to be taking. There also is a bit of player interaction. I'm constantly looking at the resource my opponent has to see if they can build the building that I want to build right now. Or I'm kind of looking at the sites that they've already, already constructed to make sure I can minimize the points they're getting. You know, are they getting a lot of parks? Parks, if you get a lot of them, are worth a lot of points. If I see a park come up, then maybe I'm going to forego all those actions and resources to make sure I take that park away from them. But again, weighing how many tiles I need to skip to get it is good decisions to be made. The random setup does add some variety to the game as, it, as do the random pulls of the buildings. Sometimes if there's a lot of factories early on, the resources are very plentiful and the resource contracts maybe aren't as important during the game. But your ultimate goal is always the same. Get the most points and construct the buildings you need. But with the random setup, you may meet, need to use slightly different tactics each time you play, which I thought was well done. Now, even though there is a fair bit of very, uh, uh, variability in the base box, I do feel I wanted more in the game, and I would love to see an expansion of buildings that had more uh, placement options. Only the shop and the tenement blocks uh, matter where you place them for points. I'd have loved to see more of that to make the tile placement a little more engaging. It kind of felt like it was second fiddle to the move as far as you want ahead. But what do I recommend this game? Definitely. If you're looking for a two-player game that is reasonably quick and easy to teach, this is the game for you. I like the variable setup, which changed the way I approach the game each time. I also like the relative simplicity of the serial. You know, it's easy to teach and play while still giving you meaningful decisions to be made on your turn. The game also lasts a good amount of time. You know, this isn't a five minute filler game. It will take you 20 to 30 minutes and you can see the game coming so you can maybe adjust your gameplay accordingly. I do wish though that there's a little more tile placement was a little more engaging. It mattered for a few tiles, but I would like to see more importance of where I place my new tiles for scoring purposes at the end of the game. So overall, I'm gonna give this game an eight out of 10 and easily the Dice Tower seal of approval. If you're looking for a lighter Euro game for two players, this is the game for you. There is nothing we haven't seen before in this box. You know, tile placement with that move as far as you want mechanism, but it does so in a thoroughly enjoyable way. And that makes this game one you should happily add to your collection. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.